Okay, with that, if you'd stand with me, please, and if we read the Word of God, just the one verse, very familiar verse uh, to all of us here this morning, and it says this, it says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come before you in prayer and we can see results uh, from the time that we spend in prayer. So I just pray for your uh, blessings on this message this morning. Let it be a blessing to each one that's here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated if you wish. This, uh, this verse is an interesting verse. Uh, talking about prayer, that's what I want to talk about this morning is prayer. Betty Sue said some good things about prayer already, and uh, but I want, I have some things that I want to talk about, and there's uh, a lot of different situations where uh, we, we need to pray and, and so forth, and so this morning I want to cover some of those and just look at what the Word of God says about prayer. Uh, the title for my sermon this morning is Prayer is Required. And I believe that every Christian should spend some time in prayer. And uh, it's just a, a great thing. It's the communication we have with God. And God desires our prayer. I, I, uh, I think about sometimes when children grow up and they move out away from home, sometimes quite some distance and sometimes not so far. But I hear parents uh, a lot of times say words to the effect that they would desire that their kids would call them more often, communicate with them more. Uh, well, you know, I think God feels that same way. He wants us to communicate with him. And that's what prayer is about. So we need to pray. And there's a lot of different situations that we are involved with that we, when we pray, and one thing that I do, and, and very, uh, I'm very faithful in doing this in my prayer, is I pray for the food that I eat. I always ask God to bless the food, and it's something I started to do when I first got saved, and I've been doing it all these years, and I believe that that's something that, that Christians should do. And so I want to give you some scripture on this, and uh, I think this is an interesting setting of scriptures found in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1 through 5, and Paul writing to Timothy said this, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from, from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So here it's talking about uh, some things that uh, here the Bible said would happen in the last days and said that uh, uh, they would depart, people would depart from the faith and uh, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and uh, that they would uh, speak lies and hypocrisy and, and uh, their, their conscience would be sheared with a hot iron. They would uh, forbid marriage and command to abstain from meats which God has created to be received uh, with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And verse 4 then says, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be re refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So when we pray for our food, our food is sanctified uh, in the eyes of the Lord, and God uh, honors uh, that prayer that we have before we sit down 
to eat our meals each meal time and so that is a biblical practice and so forth uh, I, I just like to think about this scripture and think about the things that has happened to some scripture and it said they would depart from the faith in the latter days uh, I uh, I think about this situation and uh, I've known people that, have, that has departed from the faith uh, and uh, is not living for God anymore once has known the, the, the wonderful love of the Lord and so forth but they've departed from the faith uh, I was thinking in our text this morning and it says here to, that we should confess our faults one to another uh, so I I uh, I've thought a lot about that verse of scripture, our text this morning, and one thing that it, it, that uh, we need to do, we need to look up the word fault, and I looked that up, and the word fault means means unintentional mistakes, unintentional mistakes. That's a definition that I found in in Strong's for the for the word faults, and so as we looked at that, so we should pray one for another that we may be healed and I know this scripture is used a lot for physical healing and I believe in physical healing but here I believe that in this setting that the the scripture is talking about being healed from our faults and that's what the the scripture begins with and then it says the effectual fervent prayer uh, uh, effectual denotes effective or something that's going to work. So the effectual, fervent prayer. Fervent means to be serious and get down to business and really pray. And that's what this is talking about here. And we need to do that. We need to pray. And it says, and, and the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so when we pray, we know that our prayers are heard and God uh, hears and, and answers our prayers. But there's always conditions that goes along with our prayers. Uh, and so as we continue here in Ephesians, I want to just go through some scriptures this morning. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And so here I find, as I read these scriptures, I find that uh, uh, as we look at this, we need to recognize that prayer is something that's a very important part of Christianity and being a Christian and living for God. And so we need to really look to the Lord and uh, we need to uh, use prayer. We need to pray one for another we need to pray about situations and we need to have daily prayer as when we sit down to eat and and uh, pray for guidance for the day I think about a poem that my mother-in-law used to say quite a bit and she talked about uh, praying and when we start our day and how that and this one neat poem I don't have a copy of it but it, she talked about in this in this poem she used to read about how that uh, uh, she neglected to pray one morning and nothing went right during the day and so she would pray it's a very clever poem that's put together and in, in a very professional way it's pretty neat and another one she used to have is uh, talked about different ways of praying and and it named four or five different ways to pray and in this farmer he said that uh, uh, he fell down in a well head first and he said that and the, the prayer ended up he said the praying prayer that I ever said was standing on my head and so sometimes we have to get real uh, real serious with God and sometimes we have to be in a state of crisis before we really get serious about praying and I think we're all guilty of that, that, uh, you know, when we have problems and difficult times, that's when we really get busy about praying and really get sincere. Uh, and uh, sometimes I think maybe God allows things to happen in our lives 
uh, in order for us to get sincere about talking to him. And so uh, uh, this is something that's very important, and that's prayer in the church and, and prayer individually. And as I go through these different things, uh, back to our scripture te text, it says to confess your faults one another and pray one for another. Pray one for another. I, it's so important that we remember each other when we pray. So many times when I'm praying in my office, which that's the way I start my day most, most days, is I go into the office and take a bowl of cereal and a cup of coffee with me and, and I sit in there and I have breakfast and I pray before I have breakfast and I pray about the day and I pray many, many times I pray for each one of you as I start my day there in my office and I think that's so important that we do pray for one another and not just for, and not just for people that need something special in their life uh, we need to remember those also, but we just need to remember one another. And, excuse me, getting the hiccups this morning. Uh, and we need to, uh, but we need to remember each other in prayer and just ask God to bless our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And, and so we need to hold each other up uh, uh, in the Lord. And so we pray in a lot of different ways. We pray for our food. We pray for one another. Uh, how about congregational prayer when we, when we pray together and we're, or let's say uh, there's times when I might ask somebody to, dis to dismiss us in prayer. Uh, how about that kind of prayer? Is that scriptural prayer for us to, to gather together and pray or to pray publicly like this? And uh, as we look at the Word of God, we'll find that it is. It's very scriptural, and we need to do that. And in Matthew uh, 18, verse 19, Jesus said, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So, people gathering together and agreeing together has more power with God than when you pray individually. And so uh, as we prayed for John this morning for his back, uh, if God hears the prayer of two or three, uh, he surely heard our prayer this morning and God, John's back is going to be okay. We can know that. So as we, as we do this, we realize that group prayer is very profitable. In Acts chapter 9, and I'm going to read verse 12, or Acts chapter 12 and verse 12, here we find that Peter had been in jail, and the Lord had miraculously uh, freed Peter from prison. And so there he was, and so he goes down uh, to uh, Mary. Uh, uh, let me just read the scripture. And we had considered, the, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And I'll, I think this is such a neat Bible story. I love this Bible story in the 12th chapter of Acts because Peter's in prison and all the saints there, they're concerned about him and and so forth and so they gathered together in Mary's house and they began to pray and lo and behold Peter was freed from prison and he came to Mary's house and when he knocked on the door he found the door was locked and he just knocked on the door and a young lady came to the door and she was so excited she didn't even unlock the door she just went back and told everybody Peter's at the door and they said, no, Peter's not at the door. We know that Peter's in prison and so forth. And we find a situation here where they was praying and they did not really believe that God was going to answer their prayer. But he did so anyway. And he answered their prayer anyway. I think about a story I heard one time about a church that was in a certain location. And there was a vacant lot beside of the church. And lo and behold, some guy bought that lot and he built a bar there. 
And so the church people was all upset because that bar was there right next door to the church. And so the church, they all just began to pray, God, burn that bar down. Just burn it down. Well, this went on for a period of time, and pretty soon that bar caught on fire, and it burned down. And so the owner of the bar, he took the, 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 the church people to court. He sued them. So he took them to court, and he, the, the, the judge heard the case, and, and this man that owned the bar said, I know it's the people's fault in the church because they was praying that God would burn my bar down. And so the people at the church in defense uh, for what happened, they said, oh, no, we, we didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't burn that down. That was not a, a, a result of anything that we done. And the judge said, you know, he said, this is the strangest case I've ever heard. You have a bunch of church people here that didn't believe God would answer their prayers, but the owner of the bar believed God would. And so I thought, well, that's kind of a humorous thing that happened there, but uh, uh, God does hear and answer prayers. And, and so uh, uh, here Peter had been delivered from prison, and he was freed, and the people praying didn't even believe that God was going to answer their prayer, and yet God answered their prayer. So that's a great thing. So let's look at another thing. Uh, uh, thing about prayer this morning, another area of prayer, and let's look at family prayer, and let's see what the Bible says about family prayer. We've heard the saying, I think we've all heard the, the saying that says that the family that prays together stays together, and that's really true, and family prayer is very important, and we need to pray in, in, uh, at home, and pray with our children, and pray with our mates, and and, uh, and so forth, our spouses. And, and so as we look at this verse of Scripture in Acts chapter 21 and verse 5, and listen to what it says here. It says that when he had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. So the whole family was there and had prayer alongside of the shore uh, there as they kneeled down and they prayed. So here we find that uh, uh, God hears and answers prayer. So uh, as uh, I think prayer is such an important part of being a Christian and such an important part of every church. It's an element that if we have uh, if we have church without having prayer, then it's just something that uh, uh, we are missing out and uh, we are missing a lot of blessings and so forth if we neglect prayer. The next thing I want to talk about is conditions for successful prayer. How do we have successful prayer? And we need to wonder sometimes why that we pray for things and we don't get those things we pray for. Well, it's been said sometimes God just says no, and other times he says wait, and those things is also true. But there's reasons why God says no sometimes to prayer. And so let's take a look at some scripture. Uh, the, the one thing is that... Uh, uh, we, that God really honors marriage. It's something that is very important, that God really honors marriage. So in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, here's what the Bible says. He says, Likewise ye husbands dwell with them, speaking about their wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together, of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So if some guy is mistreating his wife or vice versa, did you know that that'll hinder the prayers of those people? It can really hinder those prayers. And so because God honors uh, marriage and honors the that relationship and he wants us to, 
to honor and care for our wives and for wives to respect their husbands and uh, for man and wife to work together and get along and to pray together and, and work together and God. And so we find that uh, uh, another thing that hinders the, uh, the prayers of a lot of people is sin. And I want to read a scripture that's a very familiar scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 14. And here's what this scripture says. And, and listen to what this says. And I believe that this scripture should be spoken loud and clear across America today. We really need to look at this. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, that's you and I, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will give their and will forgive their sin and will heal their land I believe this morning that if every Christian across America would just follow the instructions here in 2 Corinthians seven fourteen, if every Christian across America would do this I believe this, that this land would be healed and we would turn around and we would head in a different direction than what we're going now in spite of how many people wants to do things different. I believe God would honor that and we would see America go back to a God-fearing country the way it was before. And I thank the Lord that there is, uh, that there is uh, prayerful Christians today in America people that love the Lord and people that live right. But God requires us to live a holy life, and that's a life without sin. And so as we look at this, we need to uh, really practice this and really look unto the Lord. Okay, we need to be obedient people. And obedience is very, uh, very helpful and very uh, required uh, to be for us to be obedient to the Lord uh, in order for our prayers to be answered. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22, the Bible says, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. So we need to obey the teachings in the Word of God. Whatever the Word of God says, we need to apply it to our lives. We need to live by that, and that needs to be part of our life, whether it's every day or, or uh, uh, you know, on down the road or whatever. 1 John 5 and 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. So we need to pray according to God's will. And we can't, uh, uh, you know, like I uh, heard the story about a man one time that uh, he was, was a bank robber and, and he'd go rob banks. And so uh, he was pretty successful. He was getting away with it. And somebody asked him one time, uh, how, how does he do this? And so they asked him and he said, well, I guess it's because I always go and pray before I go rob a bank. Well, you know what? I think that fellow had the wrong idea. Uh, that, that isn't the reason why he was successful. And no matter what we do, if we need to do according to his will, and if we live according to God's will and do things according to his will, then he will hear and answer our prayers. And so we need to do things according to his will. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. We'll be getting to that on our Wednesday night study. Uh, and here's what it says. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Search for me with all your heart. I think sometimes we get into the, uh, a, a state of mind where we don't get serious about our prayer and we have memorized prayers and I've heard people complain about certain Christian organizations where they have like prayer books where they have different prayers in those prayer books that you memorize those and you learn to, to repeat those over and over again and so forth. And I've heard uh, Christians that would be very 
uh, critical of this type of prayer, uh, and I'm critical of it myself, uh, if that's the only kind of prayer that you have, uh, and that can be true with the Lord's Prayer that we read in the Bible. If we get to the place where we just uh, memorize that and say it over and over again, after a while it loses its meaning and, and it has no, we have no compassion and no real sincere prayer when we pray like that. But I'll tell you what, I have found, I have found amongst spirit-filled Christians where they get in the habit of saying prayers in a certain way and they use the same words over and over again and that's not any better than people that has a prayer book with those prayers in that prayer book. And so we need to pray from the heart. God wants to talk to us on a personal level. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, uh, and I don't do this very well, but uh, uh, the man that uh, he would uh, uh, go to work this morning and, and uh, as he would leave in the morning, he would tell his wife, uh, he would say, honey, I love you. I'm going to miss you today. And I'm uh, looking forward all day long to seeing you when I get home tonight. And so someone said one time that this fella actually had that written on a card. And he had it in his pocket on his, on his coat. And he would look at that and he would read it as he was saying it. Uh, so he would pray, would read, honey, I... Uh, I love you. I'm going to miss you today. I'm going to look forward all day long for when I get back uh, from work tonight. Well, that kind of prayer had no meaning and no real feeling to it. And his wife then didn't uh, receive much from it. Well, we don't need to get that way with the Lord either. We need to be sincere and really talk with the Lord. And so it's important that we have sincere prayer. Another scripture in that, in that line is Mark 11 and 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And this is talking about praying in faith. Uh, John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Luke 11 and 9 says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. This is, uh, I, I wanted to share this scripture with you because this shows an aggressive attitude about prayer. Uh, we had a pastor one time, and he used to preach about the situation with Elisha, I believe it was, where uh, Elisha told the the king to take some arrows and hit the ground, and he hit the ground just three times, I think, and, and uh, the, the, uh, Elisha told him, you should have taken those and hit a lot of times. And, and in other words, he was telling him, be aggressive when you do something in the name of the Lord, and so forth. And so uh, here, uh, the Lord says, I say unto you, ask. Well, that's not a very aggressive thing. Uh, it says, ask and it shall be given you. And then it says, seek. Well, ask is not real aggressive, but if you seek, that becomes more aggressive. Uh, and it shall be done unto you. Uh, and and uh, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If we get, we need to get serious about serving the Lord and just really, really get aggressive in our prayers and so forth. So. Uh, be sincere and pray. And for my last scripture setting this morning is from the 6th chapter of Matthew. And here we find some instructions from the Lord. And this is from the Sermon on the Mount. And here, here's what Jesus said about prayer. Uh, so I've, I've mentioned several kinds of prayer. We pray in the congregation and we pray in groups and, and we have different kinds of prayer and we make sure that we're living free from sin and so forth. Uh, but here in Matthew 6, verses 5 through 15, so as we look at these verses, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. 
Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closets, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So here, the Lord is talking about personal prayer. And I, and I, I want to just share something with you this morning that I think you all, every one of you here knows this already, but there is no prayer like a prayer when you get alone someplace and get alone with God and just really talk to God. It's so important because when you're alone with God, you don't hear, uh, people don't hear what you're saying when you pray. When you pray here in the congregation, everybody hears what you have to say. And so I think sometimes we get uh, kind of careful about what we say because people's going to hear us as we pray. And all of that's okay because we want our prayers to affect other people as well as uh, letting God hear our hearts and what we desire. But when we're alone, we can pray and we can just, just pray our heart out to the Lord and ask the Lord what we need and discuss things with God and just really get sincere. And we don't have to worry if things are phrased right or if we put enough emphasis on this point or that point or anything like that, but we can just talk to God. Uh, and I think so much about this. Uh, when I was working, everybody knew I was a preacher. In fact, my nickname out of our union hall and all the guys that worked with me, they all got to know me as Preacher John. And uh, so I recall that there were several times when there was uh, would be times when I would just be alone someplace, maybe myself and one other guy would be alone doing something, and they'd bring up the subject of God or going to church or prayer or, or different things. And it was amazing that how the guys sometimes would open up their hearts and they would talk to me and be real serious about uh, talking about God. But if you tried to talk to that same individual when the whole crew was there, uh, they wouldn't hear a thing. They didn't want to talk about it or anything. And you know, and being alone with God is, is kind of like that because we can just pour our heart out to God. We can talk to Him. And no matter what kind of what words we use and all, the Lord knows our hearts. He knows what we're saying, what our desires are, and so forth. And, and we can just uh, really get down to business with the Lord. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee open. Verse 7, But when ye pray, use not vain reputations, already covered that, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. And isn't it great that we serve a God that He knows what our every need is. He knows the direction that we're going in our lives. He knows the things that we should have. And God hears and answers prayer. And so this morning I hope that uh, uh, the things that I've shared with you will be help for you, helpful to you in your walk with God. And so we need to apply these things. We need to find a time to pray. Uh, and, uh, and we need to spend that time in prayer and seeking the Lord and just looking unto Him and hearing His voice. And we need to follow Him however He speaks to us and the direction that He gives us for our lives. So uh, pray unto the Lord and be faithful about prayer and be sincere and and don't think for uh, for a moment that uh, that you can just uh, uh, have a form of prayer and then live go out and live the life uh, according to your own lust and and uh, self desires and things like that but pray I you know there's something about prayer that I have found and something that I truly believe and that is this I do not believe that anybody can live a, a life of sin, his lifestyle is filled with sin, and can pray and be serious with God. I just don't believe you can do that, because when you pray, 
you begin to really understand and really know that God knows every thought that you have. He knows your heart. He knows everything about you. And no matter what you say, you cannot fool God. You cannot deceive Him or, 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 uh, or put anything over on Him. But you just pray and you seek the Lord. And as you pray, the Lord will give you guidance and understanding. Just remember that God is a God of love and understanding and, and a God that's long-suffering. And he, it's amazing what God puts up with in our lives. But stay in touch with God. Stay in touch with God. And sometimes the Lord will begin to deal with you to make changes in your life and so forth. And the more you pray, the more he'll reveal those kind of things to you. So I don't believe a person can live a lifestyle of sin and be a regular, have a regular prayer life in their life. And so this morning, uh, I just really felt like that this would be a good message to start the year. Uh, I'd like to just to, to see everybody in the church begin to uh, be very prayerful and spend that time in prayer and seek the Lord and just let the Lord lead us through this coming year. I believe that God will do great things for us in this church if we'll just stay in touch with Him, if we'll listen to His voice and obey the things of the Word of God then we'll have another great year. And I just, uh, I think we're a blessed church already, but I believe it can be even better. And so this morning, uh, let's be like uh, uh, Jesus said, that uh, my Father's house shall be a house of prayer. And that's what we need, is we need to be a house of prayer. So with that, let us stand, let us stand this morning.